Good afternoon, hello, welcome to the Triathlon Dan YouTube channel. Welcome to a video with a professional triathlete. No, not me, I haven't won it. Yeah, exactly, I haven't won any races. Uh, Andy Horsel Turner, welcome to the channel, Andy. You've been here a couple of times before. Thank you very much for taking time out of your busy training and work and social life. I know you've got a lot going on, so we do really appreciate it. Uh, yeah. We just thought we'd get you on, basically, because, um, well, we've, we've seen you on the Oxygen Addict uh, podcast. I thought, well, you need to come on my triathlon channel. So, so there we go. Um, so, Andy, for those that don't know who you are, because there might be a minority out there who don't, do you want to perhaps give us a little bit of a you know, view about yourself and like you know what you do in the triathlon world? Yeah, yeah, sure. So I'm well, I'm still relatively new to the triathlon world. So I, I took up try in 2018. Um, then this season kind of has so far gone pretty well. So I raced Outlaw Half Nottingham. Um, finished second on the podium there um, and managed to gain my pro criteria there um, to take my pro license. Um, I then raced Holcomb, the PTO-sponsored event, but in the amateur field still, um, which was quite fun. Um, didn't have the best day there. And then I bounced off that and did Outlaw Full um, in July, where I managed to break the course record and uh, take the win there. So, yeah, so far in terms of I guess the first half of the season was completely pure like outlaw events. Um, so a pretty successful year so far. I come from an elite swimming background, so um, I'm not like a new to sport kind of guy. I, I come from an elite background, so therefore like my progression has been pretty rapid, but you kind of would expect that because I have got, I guess, a heart and lungs that are pretty developed already. Yeah, so um, it's pr pretty sickening that you only started the sport about three years ago, but you can't forget that you've been used to training morning, noon and night for years. Yeah, and like, it, it, I, it's very, very true for like all things, you know, like it doesn't matter what movement you're doing, like the heart doesn't realise, the heart gives you, like gives gives beats, gives gives you blood regardless of what you're doing. Mm -hmm. So in terms of like that aspect of sport, you know, I'm, I'm developed there. So it is just the specificity of like leg strength and mm -hmm. durability on the run and all those little other things that... Um, have seemingly come pretty well but it's definitely been a journey over the last few years and i'm excited about the next few years so um yeah i was meant to race um kona last weekend as an as an amateur um but as you mentioned um i decided to take my pro license uh, about two months ago when they cancelled kona and i've just started dipping my toe in a couple of mm -hmm. yeah pro races yeah so we've actually raced each other a couple of times albeit we didn't know each other when we did wales in 2019 yeah. uh, you just beat me by about an hour and a half um, <laughs> and then we raced at the outlaw Four this year and you beat me by about two and a quarter hours i think that shows the uh, progression that you've made and the uh <laughs> flaps, although, flaps although, <laughs> although you kept me going on that run course when i was running past you yeah, i think I um know. I, uh, I was meant when I when I saw Dan. I was, I was probably about 20, 27, 28 k in, and I was just hitting that point in the race where I think you you almost want to pull out regardless of how well or, or badly it's going. And yeah, that was a, that was a good place to see you because you definitely spurred me on a bit. Yeah, it was really great to see you twenty seven or twenty eight k when I had like ten <laughs> laps left to do. Yeah, thanks for that. So you um you took your professional or oh, elite long distance license, and you have since had so we're in the middle now when this video goes out you know you've done two races and you've got a, a big race coming up so yeah you described it previously as you were having work experience this year you were going to give a few races a go and you have given a couple of races a go so do you perhaps talk us through uh, the, the races and, and how they went i think i would butcher the first name of ox saint provence <laughs> I, I, I say ox on provence but i'm right. definitely not french so That's um, fine to me. yeah so um yeah so that was the first one it's, um, it's a hard race. distance race isn't it yeah 70.3 um I raced the event um, in 2019. So one of my girl at races for um, Ironman Wales, I went out to France and I did that. And it was a really, really cool place. So I wanted to go back there. So when obviously when I took my license and I saw that that was on the cards, mm -hmm. I yeah, took the opportunity. Um, the race itself kind of went almost, I guess, how I was, how I was, how I was hoping it went. So I managed to lead out the swim. I... Did you have anybody with you in the swim? Yeah, so a guy was swimming with me, which was... Um, That's weird, isn't it, I suppose? Well, it's, it's different. Like, I've <clears throat> been coming from, like, a swim background. I'm used to being in, like, packs of swimmers, you know, like, mm -hmm. doing some open water races. So mm -hmm. it was kind of almost, like, tapping back into, like, me from a 2016, 2015 kind of 
kind of uh, situation. So mm-hmm. it's nothing I, I nothing I haven't experienced before. I, I kind of thought I might be able to drop him, but he, to be fair to him, he did a really, really good job of sitting on me. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I came out of transition. And that's where one of the cracks started to fall. Like mm-hmm. this guy flew past me in transition. Mm-hmm. He just, he knew, he knew what he was doing. I kind of couldn't get my wetsuit in my bag, you know, proper amateur mm-hmm. mistake. Like I was just slipping around and yeah. making a mess. And um, so he got me. Um, and then, um, yeah, bike went really, really well. I, I got a drafting penalty, which was, a, it's, it's one of the most frustrating things being 10K into a 90K bike. And then someone holding up a, a blue card, I think it's blue card, mm-hmm. saying you've got a five minute drafting penalty um, for what, I think is, was completely unfair. Basically, mm-hmm. an athlete had slotted into a gap between me and Maurice Clavel. Yeah. Um, and there wasn't really a gap to slot into. Mm-hmm. Um, but the rules are different in age group and pro fields, aren't they? So in age group, yeah. if you get past the, the person, it's their job to drop back. Whereas in the pro field, you can't drop into a space of less you than can't drop meters. into a space if it's not bigger than 12 metres. Yeah. Um, and I was pretty much, I think, bang on 12 metres. But, you know, with pro racing, I think mm. the 12 metre rule is a bit inconsistent let's say Mm -hmm. so my definition of 12 meters may be accurate but actually what the pros race it is normally more like Mm -hmm. nine ten meters yeah well i think the fact you somebody gave you a penalty for being too close that person who's pulling in front probably says that (laughs) that there was probably a a 12 meter gap yeah yeah so i i basically yeah so as soon as he slotted in i started to like um i sat up so i came out of my air bars sat up Mm -hmm. tried to move out the way Start, went for my brakes and like literally within seconds. Mm-hmm. Hey, but um, after that, you know, I, I I rode hard. I managed to pretty much hold posi- oh, like a really good position. So I think I was into T2 and about fourth or fifth. Mm-hmm. Um, only about two minutes 50 down on the leader at that point. Mm-hmm. And I, was I, in- did, I did like not seeing you in the penalty tent, but you had a massive smile on your face. Uh, and I think it must have just been still cool to be in the race, but frustrating to be in the penalty tent. Yeah, yeah, so, so. yeah so I went straight into the penalty tent and you saw people come in to transition after mm-hmm. you and it was frustrating to start off with. And I was like, they had an iPad with the time ticking down and thought, like five minutes is a long time. Mm-hmm. I think you're not allowed to like take your helmet off or stretch or anything. No, you're not allowed to stretch. You're not even allowed to move. Like literally, I started, I tried to like shake my, I started to like shake my leg out and the official was like, <laughs> I was like, okay, I'm sorry, yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but my dad was um, my dad was came out with me to spectate, so he was um, at the side and he was, we were just chatting, like yeah. um, not coaching or anything like that. He was yeah. just um, just uh, just chatting to me, and he yeah, took a little snap at me, so I smiled mm-hmm. for the camera. Yeah. Um, but yeah, then actually got on the wrong course, overran for the first lap, felt really bad on the second lap, mm-hmm. and then felt really good on the last lap, um, mm-hmm. and ran um a hilly 116 which is by far the best run i've ever done off the bike solid um yeah. me and my run coach we've been debating whether the five minute penalty hindered or helped mm. um because i kind of feel like it hindered because that first uk of the run i was so stiff mm-hmm. um but then at the same time you know when i started the run my heart rate was really low and yeah. i wasn't breathing heavy so hey i i think it was a solid day out Mm-hmm. Um, I finished eleventh. If I hadn't have had the penalty, I would have been about fifth or sixth. Wow! Yeah. Um, which for a pro de- debut would have been, you know, if yeah. I came in fifth, sixth, I would have been absolutely est- ecstatic. Mm-hmm. So um, even eleventh, you know, first pro, it, it's a pro race. Yeah, you know? I think you did really well. Not pro race yeah. at the same time is is a good thing, you know. I think you did really well not to lose your head. I think some people could have been a bit thrown off by the penalty and DNF'd or. Uh, you know, just let your pace of plan go go to pot or something. So yeah, it seems like right. you took that in your stride. Yeah, so overall... It certainly, it certainly gave me some uh, ammo for trolling you on Instagram. <laughs> just call you a pack right now. Yeah, no, yeah. Well, that's me. I, I don't... <laughs> but it's oh, yeah. funny because it's funny I got the penalty and then um, I then saw my dad, um, Billy from Triforce mm-hmm. um, and a few other like uh, British guys about 30k into the bike and at that point i obviously knew i had my penalty and i kind of shouted to them and at the point that point i was leading and there was about four guys sitting behind me about five meters back and i've got a video on my dad's phone of, of how close these guys were to me yeah. and um they were just baffled they were like how's he got the penalty yeah. <laughs> oh, dear. okay so, so that uh, yeah, okay. so a great race on to the next one you went to a challenge race didn't you is it challenge summer in was it uh salute Salute. 
So in Spain, near Barcelona, mm -hmm. um, I've never been to um, a challenge event before. Mm -hmm. um, so it was a different experience. They definitely mm -hmm. run in a different way. I, they mm -hmm. obviously try and do that more like exclusive family feel to it. A bit like, mm -hmm. I'd say probably a bit more like Outlaw. Yeah. Um, because like even like the race organizer, like the day before, he was taking people out on course rackies. You know, he mm -hmm. was down at the sun start showing people where the course was. It was, mm -hmm. it was a really really nice atmosphere. Um, and then race morning, we were getting ready. It was a a warm warm swim, so we um started putting our swim skins on and stuff like that. And then um, literally looking over at the water and the waves were crashing, and it started to lighten up, and you could see how big these waves were. And, mm -hmm. Yeah, it just, we walked over and you could just tell from like the outset that it was, uh, for me, I was really looking forward to it because I was thinking mm -hmm. to myself, right, this like, like really, really choppy conditions basically means it's really hard to draft. Mm -hmm. So the likelihood of being someone be able to stick on my feet is even like harder. Mm -hmm. So the, the thought of like one or two of us maybe being able to get away and getting a good gap. Um, but as soon as we got down to the swim start, like all the pros were chatting and yeah, we knew there was not going to be a swim. Um, but, then, but then we kind of, the, the next question was, if there's no swim, what is there going to be? Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> You've seen places, places like Lanzarote, it did like, uh, everybody runs to their kit bag and then gets on the bike and that looked yeah, like so carnage. So they, so they that, was one, they that was one option. And then obviously, then the other thing we were thinking about is maybe they'll do like just a staggered time trial start, start for the bike. Mm -hmm. A bit like you were doing like a normal TT, like, yeah. Uh, people going on <clears throat> second gaps or 60 second gaps or whatever just yeah. do it all a time trial but um they made Instead, it even run. even even worse they did yeah they made it a duathlon so um 5k run 90k bike and mm -hmm. then a half marathon mm -hmm. and um being a swimmer and my weakest discipline being a run um yeah i was pretty but what not i wasn't downbeat obviously i knew instantly like the race had changed like mm -hmm. i was going from doing a race where i was going to be at the front to doing a race where i knew i'd probably be in like not the back but like the back third back half you know yeah. like there's like some guys here that are running sub 14 minute 5k yeah so, you know? so i was blown away by the splits firstly how fast you ran you did have a solid run yeah but then similarly how big the gap still was to the front yeah so <clears throat> like i was only I think I was only within, I think I was like 55 seconds off the front, wasn't I? Mm -hmm. But within that 55 seconds, there was people behind me as well. Mm -hmm. But within that that group, there was like 30 athletes. So where I'm normally off the front, and I've obviously only got to contend with people who are coming up to me or like, like lo the logistics in terms of like trying to not get caught drafting, which mm -hmm. I have shown I'm not very good at. <laughs> and challenge is a 20 meter draft rule, isn't it? Challenge is a 20, 20 meter draft. So actually on the first lap, I was going up one of the slight inclines and I could see Tom Davis at the front of the pack, uh, the, the second pack it was. Mm -hmm. So Tom Davis was at the front of the second pack and I was at the back of it. And there's 10 people in that pack. Mm -hmm. So I had to go 450 watts for about two, two and a half, three minutes mm -hmm. to pass everyone yeah. and get to the front of this pack. But I was very aware that like, unless I moved up, I was going to be nowhere. Yeah. You could have just waited for Tom to have a mechanical. Do I need to crop that bit out? No, I'll leave it in. <laughs> no, no. He's sure had that some, bad look, look. Is that some bad luck, hasn't he? You okay, managed to get it. through without a mechanical. I, oh, I think you might have had a dodgy break that day, actually. Oh, so. <laughs> of course. Okay, um, wow. So a different, different vibe then. Yeah, no, I got, to, I got into, uh, I guess, a half-decent position. We were closing on the lead pack uh, with, like, people, British guys like Sam Wade were in the, mm -hmm. in the lead um, bike pack. And every time we did, like, the out and backs, we could see that we were gaining on them. Mm -hmm. We came to transition maybe, like, 50, 60 seconds behind them. Mm -hmm. It was a super so, like, windy day, wasn't it? Yeah, super windy day. Um, and I went down to, uh, I was going to leave my shoes on the bike and obviously do a bit of a flying dismount. Mm -hmm. um, I know pretty skillful yeah That's literally the amount of my skill is is awful but yeah. um i did have to learn to do that because i thought if i if i jump off in my cycling shoes i might look like an idiot yeah if it counts. <laughs> um so i went down to undo my cycling shoe and my right hamstring just literally just clenched into like a knot mm -hmm. um and i literally had to free wheel the last hundred meters to transition because i couldn't pedal <laughs> I was trying to straighten my leg out at the side of the bike Mm. And literally, it was just like struggling to release. So I obviously got to the dismount line and I was like, right, so try to get my leg over the bike. I got my leg over the bike and it cramped again. 
Right. So I was literally stood there, <clears throat> the this mountain lion's about a metre in front of me, and a few, there's people whooshing in to transition past me at this point. Mm -hmm. I'm stood there and all the officials are like starting to fuss me, being like, yeah, go, go, go. And I was like, no, no, I was like, wait, wait, wait. Give me a minute. Yeah, so I managed to get through, um, rack my bike, shoes on, and I kind of tentatively jogged out of transition mm -hmm. um, and kind of got up to race pace, but it was not, it wasn't quick. Mm -hmm. um, and after about two or three K, it started to like, you know, you know, you know how it is, like you start... Mm -hmm start dropping five seconds a k and then 10 seconds a k and and by the time i got to about 6k i was i was jogging mm -hmm. um to the point where my worst kilometer split out lawful was i think a 433 mm -hmm. and i was running 450 right for half so distance. to the point yeah to the point where like i was literally jogging and i could feel the cramp coming back in my in my hamstring and mm -hmm. i knew that i had I wanted to finish the season with a big iron man. Mm -hmm. um, so I had to DNF. Well, I didn't have to DNF, but I mm -hmm. just, I thought tactically it was the best decision. I'd got a good training day. I'd done a hard 5k run. I'd done yeah. a hard 90k bike. The, if I jogged the rest of it, you know, I would have come in 15th to mm -hmm. 20th, somewhere in that region, um, which would have been a, a bad, well, not a bad result, but like not a great result. Mm -hmm. Um, but also I'm risking injury. Like yeah. if I got to the end of that ro result, came 20th and I like, had properly damaged my hamstring, I would have been yeah. like livid, if, you know? If you start a run like that, it's not going to get miraculously better, is it? It's only going to get worse. Yeah. And, and unless you race duathlon, you've in no way prepared to run 5K flat out uh, and then jump on your bike and ride in TT position. Similarly hard. Well, I've, I've never done. I've <clears throat> never done a run or a bike before. Like, yeah. ne like never. And like, I, I speaking to obviously speaking but, to my coaches after, and they said like, it's a different sport. Yeah. You know, it, like, yes, triathletes can do duathlon and vice versa, mm -hmm. but it's a different sport. You train, yeah. for it, you the train for it differently. The sessions, the key sessions, you do are different. Mm -hmm. I think um, you know, different people think differently about DNFs. I think as a professional athlete, you've got to think differently about it to what an amateur has. So if I go out and I'm having a tough day, well, that's probably my event for the year, or my main focus, and I'm not relying on prize money or a result for a sponsor or whatever. Um, you have to make that call. Cody Beals did a good post about it a while ago. He double flattered in, a, in an Ironman, and he, he DNF because of that. And he said, I, I can either try and battle through this day, be fatigued and have to race again in eight, 10 weeks, or call it there, race again in two or three weeks. And that's the... That's the mentality, isn't it? So. Yeah, and I like obviously I'm not in the same like I guess I'm not in the same, the same financial position as some of these mm. guys are, but I think um, in terms of what I was going to gain from the result, mm -hmm. it's it was limited. And I think mm -hmm. if you think about like um, yeah, kind of as you said there, like the the special like the specific race it is. So for example, I'm going to do an Ironman, um, which we're going to talk about in a second. Yep. Um, end of the season if things are going south and it's not going to plan, um, you know, I, I'm, I'd probably finish it regardless because mm -hmm. I'm, I'm planning on having an off season. I'm planning on taking some time out. You know, it, it's a completely different race. It's a completely mm -hmm. different time. It's completely, there's a completely different outcome. If, you, if, yeah. if you're at world championships, for example, if you go to Kona and you see a lot of people who are capable of going like a sub nine hour Ironman on a fast course and then mm -hmm. they go to Kona and they go 13 hours. Oh, mm -hmm. you still there? Yeah. I lost you for a second. Where, oh, no, no. where, where have you gone? One second. So, can you hear me? Yeah, there you are. Oh. I lost you for a second. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so they might go like 13 hours in Kona mm -hmm. and you think like, why Like, why did they put themselves through that? But it's the World Championship. You know, mm -hmm. you, you've just Seriously. got to get that finishes medal. Um, so I'm completely, I'm a strong believer in not DNFing um, mm -hmm. and I don't intend to make it a habit. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, yeah, as, as you're start, as I start to race professionally, there is an element of tactics as an element of, um, forward thinking as like, yeah. you've got to look after your body at the end of the day. If you can't race, mm -hmm. you're not really a pro athlete. A lot of things went wrong in that race for you, didn't they? Like the, the run and then the hamstring cramping, like it's not just one little thing's gone wrong. You're not having a perfect day. It was a case of it wasn't going like no, if, if, if there was a split in there, I don't think I would have cramped. Um, mm -hmm. And then I might have been running and, you know, it might have just had bad legs on the day, you know, run yeah. wide. Um, and 
if I didn't think I was doing any damage, I would have probably got through it okay, you know? I yeah. might have, may have not had the best run ever, but um, yeah, mm-hmm. in those situations, in, in that in that situation, I had made mm-hmm. that decision. And yeah, I think it was the right one because yeah. I, I managed to sort of bounce back quite quickly from it and I've been able to get my head down and been training pretty well, so. Mm-hmm. Wicked. Well, I am sure and I really hope that you will look back on these first two events and be like, I can't believe that my first two pro races went like, like they Not did yet. so yeah stay tuned uh, before we just go on to what i've probably clickbait in the title and thumbnail somewhere i'm gonna leave andy's uh, link to his youtube channel on instagram down below uh, you're probably more active on instagram than you are youtube andy um, i, I so, need to get back into the youtube game i yes. think that's my, i think that's gonna be my off season i think this second half of the season post so, yeah has been crazy yeah so obviously follow them both, but more specifically, Andy is racing I'm in California this weekend when this video goes out. So please do drop a follow on Instagram and I'm sure you'll be uh, dropping some updates on there of some sort. Yes, yeah, definitely. Okay, definitely. right. I'm in California. I mean, did you enter this race before it turned into the unofficial world champs? No, I entered it because it was the unofficial. Perfect. It was a world championship and you didn't have to hit an entry yeah. criteria. You just had to have a pro license. Right, perfect. So I'm going to put the start list on screen now. Um, <laughs> wow. <laughs> Andy, I can't believe they put me at the bottom as well. <laughs> well obviously, mix something up. Well, <laughs> just a, I'm a distance record holder. Um, what is going through your head, Andy? How are you gonna like? What, what's your strategy for this race? This is like it is basically the world champs, isn't it? Look, I said, I said, if anyone's listened to the the podcast I did with Oxygen Addict with Rob, um, I said it to him. He, this was when I was planning on doing Kona this year. Like, I don't want to shy away from racing the best because at the end of the day I want to be competitive within triathlon and yeah you can tiptoe around races but actually there's an opportunity here to race Jan Fredino, who's the GOAT yeah. there's an opportunity to race uh, the two time 70.3 world champion in Gustav Eden yeah. um, and then also confirm now this week as well you've got Lionel Sanders who is just it's just, it's just the guy you want to race. I, yeah. I think um, even just sharing the course with him, like someone like Lionel, you know that I'm going to be ahead of him at some point in the race. Mm-hmm. Um, so just the idea of, of sharing the course with these guys, um, measuring myself up, you know, I'm, I could have an incredible race. So say, say Jan Fredino breaks the world record because it's a course that's flat, it's fast. Jan, get around Fredino could break the world record and that's an hour quicker than I went at Outlaw for. Yeah. So... I could finish, like, I'm not even joking, 45 minutes to an hour behind Jan Fredino, and I could have a really good race. Yeah. Because that's where I'm at in my career, you know? Yeah. Um, so that, that excites me. Mm-hmm. On those that are on the start list, I mean, I take it you do a bit of research as to, as to who they are on this massive start list. Do you think there will be, like, are you going to swim in the front pack? Do you think there will be many people swimming with you? Are you going to be in front of Jan Fredino? You know, what's the, what's the plan? Are you able to plan that far ahead, or is it a case of... I think... Idea? I think if the speculation is right and Jan wants to go fast, um, he's not going to be hanging around on the swim, mm-hmm. which I think is going to be good in terms of my aspiration of trying to be at the front of the race. Because mm-hmm. if Jan was ve- being more tactical and did want to try, right, wanted to basically have an easy swim or something, he may see me as a nobody and go, right, I'll let him go. Mm-hmm. Whereas I think it's going to be more of a, he sees me, he, he wants to go with me. We we go, hopefully, break away. And I, I think, looking at the start list, I can't see anyone pop out as, like, a really strong swimmer. So, potentially, it could just be me and Jan. Gustav is a strong swimmer if he has a good day. Mm. So, maybe maybe he comes with us. I'm getting goose pimples, right? You were our swimmer in the uh, Team Sofa King Fast Relay. And to think you're going to be potentially swimming with Jan Fredino like that's absolutely I don't know how you stay so grounded I think at the same time I hope he doesn't drop me (laughs) (laughs) I can cut this bit out (laughs) it's fine okay well what what an awesome opportunity and I really really hope that does happen well yeah Yeah. exactly and then and then I think like for me for the rest of the day it's literally a case of trying to get out onto the bike as quick as I can if I am able to hang in there with the likes of Jan um obviously legally drafting and is it a wetsuit race or not wetsuit? I think it's a wetsuit, yeah. Okay. I think it's a wetsuit. So hopefully I've got the opportunity. You're going to be like getting on your bike with your wetsuit still on. I'm not wasting any time. Oh, yeah, probably. <laughs> and the goggles and hat and then helmet straight on. Um, but yeah, if I can ride with him, I think I've got to be tactical in the sense that like, I know what power I push completely mm. solo or out or full. Mm-hmm. So I think if I don't exceed that too much, 
physiologically I should be okay. Mm -hmm. So I guess it's knowing how, like seeing the actual what, seeing how my body's reacting when I'm sat behind Jan mm -hmm. or sat behind Gustav as he catches me or mm -hmm. sat behind Lionel as he catches me, mm -hmm. you know, I'm under no illusion that these boys are going to come past me um, at one point in the race. And, and if I could ride anywhere, I guess, even within sort of 10 to 20 minutes of some of these guys, mm -hmm. I probably have put down, I potentially could ride like 4, 10, 4, 15 yeah. and still lose 15 minutes, you know? Yeah. There's, only um, one way you, there's only one way you find out how hard it is to ride with them, isn't it? And that's to, that's to try. Yeah. So. And even if it's like you spend, even if it's, I spend 10K following them and I realise that this is a little bit too hard and it's a little bit outside of my, my limit. Yeah. And then I got to, I just take it back, take it back 10 watts, take it back 20 watts, mm -hmm. sit at something that I know I can sustain. And like those big guys are going to be at the front. Like, get me, don't get me wrong. They're going to be, they're going to be there. They're going to be pushing it. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of depth in the field. And there's, I guess there's more names that like aren't, I wouldn't say like big, big names but there's a lot of like depth of quality. Mm -hmm. um, so I think I'll still definitely have people to ride with. It's not um, going to be a, a couple off the front, one chase group kind of race, is there? There's going to be... Uh, I think there'll be, I think there'll be like um, scatters of people all over the place. And maybe, maybe there'll be one group that comes together. Um, but yeah, it depends how people are tactically trying to race it. You know, mm -hmm. if Gustav can, I think he'll probably just try and wait for the run. Mm -hmm. So if, I, if he's, Jan he's can't get away. Yeah, Gustav's brother, Mikhail, uh, started a YouTube channel and uh, Gustav has been on there obviously doing his training and he was saying that he is pretty sure that he'll run under, under 240. He just doesn't know how far under 240 he'll run. So. Yeah, and I, and I I ran, what, I think I was 303 at Outlaw Fall. Mm -hmm. um, so in terms of like my run performance, like I just want to, I want a, an improvement from that. Yes. So if I could run 302, you know, that's an improvement, but in my head, like, I'd like to dip under three. Mm -hmm. um, but again, it depends. Like, I may commit too much on the bike. Mm -hmm. I might get caught up in, that's Jan Fredino, that's Lamar mm -hmm. Sanders. I might get carried away. Um, but literally, there's no, there's literally no pressure in terms of, like, the outcome doesn't make or break my yeah. next season. It I always, informs I, me. I always sell it to myself that if somebody comes past me in a triathlon and they're riding too hard for me, I think, well, if I go a little bit too hard, I'm going to get so much more for it rather than just letting them go. And because I don't focus too much on the run or the overall result, I always like think, oh, yes, that's the best thing to do. But push, 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 it, might, yeah. it might not be in the case of, particularly at half distance, it's a bit easier to go harder and not ruin your day, whereas marathon's a long way to run, isn't it? So look for a consistent run and if you can improve then, then great. Yeah, and I, I hope that and it's again you don't know what happens on race day say i have say you have a, an incredible bike and you get off the bike with um someone who's running quite fast you know you, you never know if you get slightly carried away or mm. there's so many sort of fundamental factors to um the race itself whereas outlaw was it had like some quality in the field but we were all kind of doing an individual time trial yeah it's pretty from, the, that, from it? the beginning like from the swim we were all separate we pretty much all rode separate. We were all running separate. You know, at no point were we, were we like surging, racing and stuff like that. And and even on like the marathon, like if you're running with someone, like they might surge just to try and drop you. You might surge to try and keep up with them yeah. and you're just burning those matches. So mm -hmm. I, I don't know how my body will react when I try and burn some of those matches. Um, but there's only one way of finding out, isn't there? Exactly. So, Good. Yeah. I cannot wait. Um, I'm pretty sure the race will be streamed on Ironman now. So when you are watching this online, guys, please do keep an eye on the wait, race. When is this coming out, Dan? Uh, this will be out on Friday, which will be uh, Ironman is on is it's on a Sunday, isn't it? Okay, so can, I want to I want to know from everyone if they can put a comment below. Mm -hmm. Would it be weird if I tried to get a selfie with Lionel Sanders? I think that's. I know that I, I shouldn't answer on behalf of everybody. I think that's cool because Sam Long did that, didn't he? Did he? Years, okay. A few years before, yeah, I think 2015, 2016, he had a photo with Lionel at a race, and then I think, was it at St. George? I can't remember. Anyway. Just like, I'm in, a, I'm in the pro race as well, Lionel. Mm -hmm. Can I have a picture? Yeah. <laughs> I would say fine, go for it, but yeah, let, let us know your thoughts down below. <laughs> and please do follow along on the Ironman Now Facebook page, Andy's Instagram and YouTube. You might do some sort of race reflection or something. Or Yeah, no, I need to, um, I want to try and do a bit of a recap at the end of the season. So I'll probably a little bit like obviously what we chat about today, but probably include some of that. And then hopefully I'll have lots to chat about in terms of California and then 
try and get some more regular content out. Yes, good. Please do. I'm so excited. I'm going to sit and watch the race all the way through and eat as many carbs as Andy's eating. Uh, so, yeah, I look forward to that. Also, yes. Um, <laughs> before we go, I didn't want to forget to say Andy's also planning a big race season next year, a lot of time away from home. So he's had to plan strategically his personal life. So, Andy, congratulations on getting engaged to Emily. Great news. I know exactly yeah. what you're doing, getting some brownie points in the bank ahead of next year. So, good plan. We're a big fan of that. And we look forward to all being invited to the wedding. Andy said any subscriber of this channel is going to get an invite. And my channel as well. Yeah, I'm not. <laughs> Good. Well, Andy, I'm going to let you get on. Thank you very much for your time. Really excited to watch your race and uh, keep an eye out for Andy's post-race thoughts and race result. And uh, yeah, so I'll uh, see you. And I'm on a YouTube break at the minute, so I don't know like when the vid next video is going to be out. I'll see you in, a in another few days or so. <laughs> see you Cheers. Later. Cheers, Andy. <laughs>